So I'm starting the uh, CentOS Linux. Uh, okay. Can you put this back for you? Go go for you. Okay, and then push E to E as in England, so that it will uh, you will go into the edit mode. Okay, I think it went into it went all the way. It now is in the login screen right now, like yeah, a local restart. That's what I'm telling you. You have to restart again, and then when this screen comes up, push any key on the keyboard so that it will interrupt the countdown. Okay, I'm trying to st I'm trying to restart it all over again. Why don't you give me a team viewer? Let me see what you're doing. Okay, sir. Okay, I'm in the edit now. I'm already in the edit, so go to. Let me see. let me start my team here. Look at iPhone. Okay, my ID is four six nine two zero nine five three nine, and the password is uh, seven D four. Okay. R four P. Okay, good. You're in a good place. So, use your arrow key on the keyboard to go down each line. Very good. Keep going down. Keep going down. There you go. Stop right there. And then you have to come all the way to the end of the line. So push. End on the keyboard. You could push end on the keyboard. There's a key okay. that says end. There you go. Give a space there. Then type RD. No, lowercase. Dot break. K. Okay, good. Now it's really important. You push the control key on the left side of the keyboard and X on X as in Xerox. Okay. There you go. The system goes blank and comes back up. All right, good. You're in a good place. Look at this. It says switch root something else. It's not a regular login. Okay? Do you yes, see sir. That? Okay, good. Now you follow me. Go ahead. Okay, go ahead and type mount. <laughs> hyphen O you type See? zero I said O oh yeah that's true remount comma no no go back RW space no 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 space sys root no, oh, no, no. Okay. hold on go back go back then space Forward slash this root. R O O T. Okay, I know I see what I see. Okay. And hit enter. Okay, good. Alright, now you follow me. I'm gonna close the screen. And then I'm next. I got an issue. Okay, yeah. What's your um, ID? It's 188. The last three. Did you reboot yet or no? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's back on, but I just can't log into the party. Did you check the IP address? Or give me your password. Uh, it's uh, 1VSM14. Number 1VSM14. Okay, I'm in. 
Okay, so now you have to look at the IP address. So move that around. So the bound zero, you're using bound zero. So IP address is 250. Change it to 250? Yeah. Uh, let's see if it works because I tried that and it didn't work. It, okay, it won't work because what I'm going to do is I think I saw your um, address. There's going to be something else here. So what you do is you go in here, you go here. Yeah, you're going to get the message like that. You go into, uh, where is the network? Network. And uh, adapter. Uh, where is the, uh, okay, virtual host only adapter here. Here, you go into IP and you open it up and you change it to 56. <laughs> Uh oh, so and there is a one more adapter, hidden adapter somewhere here, right? Okay, let me see. Refresh. I don't want to do that, but <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, so what we will do is uh, uh, there is one more hidden internet adapter. Okay, so what you may have to do is uh, in here <clears throat> the virtual box. So you go to vi slash etc slash sysconfig network. Bond. Oh, the bond file is missing. Where is your bond file? I don't know. <laughs> is that something we downloaded in the last two classes? Because I didn't I didn't really follow the last two the last week last weekend. No, um you're gonna have to create a file name bond zero. Okay? VIILCFG born zero and in here uh, you have to give uh, some input there so if you do uh, so you could do um, device equals bond zero okay and then type equal bond I don't think yeah on boot equal yes and uh, boot proto equals um, uh, let's do dhcp okay uh, so we could just leave it off that <clears throat> so ipa start ending with 56.250 right so we're gonna restart the system ctl system ctl restart network okay so 56.103 is that what your older one was right 103 yeah 
Because the, the system, it remembered that you had 103 saved up in there. No! I'm going to be dead like a the big where is the party? You might want to get rid of this search box here. So I really don't like. Usually, it's most of the time it's annoying here. Now the system is running slow or what? So what you do is you right click here on the bottom and uh, pin it here to the taskbar. I can't. Okay, yeah, pin okay. to the taskbar. Yeah, it should connect now. Maybe it's not. So I'll tell you one other thing. Sometimes what you have to do is uh, you have to uh, you have to put the IP address twice in the saved session also. Okay, f just do it for now. Be, uh, once the system reboots, it should correct itself. Mm -hmm. It's not doing that yet. So let me clear the screen. Let's do IPA again. Let's uh, CMD. Okay, so now we're going to change it to 56 actually. See if it's going to take it. It's not taking it actually. So, so what I'll do is, uh, yeah, let's uh, probably need to restart this here. So let's do this. to do is uh, IPA in here ENP03 and uh, S8. Device uh, ELP0 is 3, yes. 
book proto non slave so what I'm gonna have to do is uh, delete this maybe Uh oh, I messed up big time. So I'm in trouble. So it's supposed to be eight. zero So On boot, yes, boot proto bound zero. So let's do static. And uh, net mask is going to be. Okay, let's see net mask.
50.250 yeah, it's working actually There you go. You're in now. Sounds good. Thank you. So now what you have to do is, uh, yeah, it doesn't matter now. So go restart the system in the background, the directly in the console here. Yeah, restart it. I init six. And then interrupt. Did you push E for interrupt? No, no, restart again. No, you can't do that now. You have to log in then restart. So when you see that countdown, um, push any key on your keyboard so that it stops the countdown. Okay, then push E for edit. Okay, then use the down or a keyboard key on the keyboard and then go to line 16 that says Linux. Linux 16, go down, keep going down. Yeah. Okay, now go back up. Go back, yeah, there you go, go down, there you stop there. Then push end on the keyboard. It will, the cursor will hop back to the end of the line. So from there to there, it's all one line, okay? So give a space there. Then type rd.break. rd.break? Yeah. B-R-I-C-K? B-R-E-A-K. Oh, break, okay. And then, yeah. this is really important. You hold on the control key on the right side of the keyboard and push okay. X. It didn't do anything. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, left side of the keyboard. Hold on the control key on the left side of the keyboard and push X. There you go. Okay. Okay, now you're good. So then watch me what I'm doing. So I'm gonna disconnect. So here, next step, you type mount hyphen O remount. Okay, mount hyphen O remount and hit enter. And the same thing on the second line. Third line, you type password. P A S S W D. And hit enter. Okay, uh, somebody isn't. Uh, somebody got a problem? Or are you caught up? Okay. So you type password, one, then here's the... To I'm sorry? Just give me one second to follow. Uh...
Okay, you caught up. Let me know when you're done. Okay. So when you type uh, password command, it's uh, telling you to change the password, right? After you enter the password a couple times, then you have to type touch touch space forward slash then a period auto relabel. Okay, then you type exit, then you type reboot. I have a question for you, sir. Yeah. After I put the command uh, ch root slash sys root, and uh, it, another thing came out, it says sh slash four dot two hashtag yeah, password. Exactly. Yes, actually, that's what it's. If you look at the screen here, it's matching my screen. That's good. Okay, but when I type the password, it says uh, command no found. Type it in all lowercase. Don't type okay. password here. That I'm not typing password. P A S S W D. Oh, okay, okay. That I think that's where the mistake is. Okay, changing password user root. Okay. Now give the new password. So you have to master this. You have to make sure you know how what you're doing here. All right. So when you go in to take uh, the test, they will give you. You will get the system, but you will not get the password. Okay. So you have to crack the password before you get in there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight this area. Oops. I don't need your help. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna put uh, the screenshot here. Okay. So this is really important here. Every step in here is really important. Okay. Then go ahead and hit type reboot and hit enter. The system will restart, and then let it go this time. Okay, it says the relabeling re could take very long, but I'm not expecting it to take too much longer.
Okay, so the system is up now. Okay, so that means that our password recovery has worked, okay? So if I do uh, type in the new password, and it's working. Okay, that's how you do. That's how you, you have to break into the system to get in there, okay? So, when you go, when you're gonna go for the Red Hat certification, this is what you're gonna be doing. I, I think I just told you all. So now, how are you gonna connect? How are you gonna connect using the, so the, so this is how you connect, right? If the system is running on other hardware, but you are sitting in on a desk, if you're working remotely, how are you gonna do that? For that, you have to do the console. Okay, so I'm gonna show you um, what console is. Uh, sorry to interrupt again, but I get the same problem again with Putty. It says network error connection timed out. What, which, what number are you connecting to? Because I, I think we changed it, right? Yeah, it was. I was connecting to the number that you put in. Yeah, but I problem. didn't save it, I think. So yeah, that's what it is. Are you typing it physically or you read? No, uh, no it, it's in there when I open it. Which one are you getting? A 50.250? Uh, hold on. Yeah, 50.250. Ping it, ping it uh, from that uh, command prompt and see if it's there. You may need to do it a couple times, try it there. The I, what is the IP is showing? Maybe the IP might have changed. That too. Log in directly and then see if the IP has changed. Mm, let me see. No, IP is the same, 50.250. Can you ping it in the command prompt? Uh, hold on one second. Dot 
It works. Is it working now? Good. Yeah. I mean, it, it works when I ping it, uh, but let's see. Is it pinging all four lines together or it's interrupting? I, I just closed that. Let me. Uh, no, no, don't let me worry come. about it. Try now, connecting. Now, now it works. Now it works. Let me log in. Oops. <sighs> Okay, very good. Thank you. Okay, so. Okay, so let's move forward here. So, so what will happen is now, uh, how do you connect if you are in a data center, right? So I'll talk about that in a minute here. So if you are connecting to a console in VMware Okay, so if you are connecting in the console here, right? So in the VMware, what you do is it would be the same interface, but a little bit better. Um, so if I go in here, I go to, um, if I type a VMware console, you will, as an admin, you will have access to this, right? And, uh, in here you go in there and uh, see these are all the list of servers here so you click in there and then you will have access to the uh, you will have access to the server which whichever one you're working on you do perform the same same task there Okay, and then if you are doing uh, for if it's for if you are on a physical hardware like for example, um, So if you're doing a, if it's like IBM or um, for IBM, HP, uh, Dell, uh, Dell, you do this, okay? So HP is gonna be ILO. ILO okay it's called integrated light out integrated light out 
and then for IBM the interface you called uh, how you're gonna connect is called a HCM I'm sorry HMC hardware management console and for Dell it's called ID rack I I D R A C integrated Dell remote access control that's what ID rack stands for so I'm gonna find the screenshot for this so that you are familiar with this but don't, don't worry about this I mean you don't have to know what exactly it is okay so what will happen is okay so I'm gonna say uh, console uh, rack console so now what will happen is a uh, uh, data center rack console R A C K console So the picture I'm looking for is, uh, I think Adil, you know what I'm talking about, right? Console, when you're racking it up. Yeah. 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 I can't find a good picture here. I think I have a picture from my other class here. Give me one second if I... So what it is, is uh, you have like rows and rows of uh, computers and in there, these are the physical rows, right? So one, uh, one hardware, what it has is it, it is connected to everything so that you could, you could, you don't have to have like, uh, you know, if you, if the rack has 10 uh, computer servers in there. You don't have to have like 10 uh, mouse keyboard, okay, and monitor. All you have to do is just one console, you have to stick it in there. And then in the back of the servers is all connected to one console. So when you come and stand in front of it, you could switch between all the servers here, okay? 
So is similar, it also called IP KVM? Yeah, it has an IP. That's what I was coming into. So the KVM, that's the exact uh, correct term. Uh, keyboard, uh, monitor, uh, no, keyboard, mouse, and video. That's what KVM stands for. So here, the data, let's see, uh, everybody know what a data center is, right? So the data center, it has nothing but rows and rows of servers here, okay? And you can literally see all these cables are plugged into each other and then it's, one cable is going in there. Oh, right here, this is a good. So, so you, have, you have so many servers here, if you want to, you're not gonna have like mouse and keyboard monitor for like, you know, all these servers here, you just have one KVM, one KVM in one row, that's good enough. And you could also connect remotely, okay? So you could you could get into this box remotely and then once you are in there, you could connect to all the other servers here, okay? So now the KVM for HP is called ILO, for IBM is called HCM, and for Dell is called IDRAC. Okay, so let's uh, let me grab the picture for each of those and then we'll be done with this Here so don't worry too much about it. This is not nobody is going to question you about this here, but I'm just throwing in so that you have some idea So HP is uh, Okay, so let me copy this from here Let's go ahead and take a, a good 10 minute break, okay? Then we'll come back because we need to take break. Okay, break starts okay. now. Okay, I'm back now. I'll give another minute here so that everybody's back. Okay, so, so let's go ahead and uh, look for this IP. Um, I'm sorry, the HP uh, light out, what it looks like. Yeah, this is how it looks like, okay? And it will have its own IP address and everything you could connect and then for the troubleshoot or um, reset the password.
Okay, so the next one is um, IBM HCM. All these, since these are server, right? A little bit expensive, so they they come with all kind of. Uh, um, what should I say? They come all kind of uh, technology in it. So I'm going to search for IBM HMC and then they're all similar here. Okay. When you go in there, you should be able to figure out how things are working. They are all those are similar in nature. Okay, this is what it looks like HMC. So you have a server, physical servers, and you have the virtual machines running on them. Did you work on any of the um, IBM stuff, Adil? Power, it's called Power Systems or something, I don't know. Uh, no, never, just uh, I know and I drag. Okay. Yeah. So we have that. We have that. Uh, IBM stuff is very expensive. They are running AIX, so not a, I mean, every every big corporation have it, but not as much. They use for like some specialized AIX software. And um, Okay, so yeah, this looks good. It has all the all the information you need here. So this is more like it. Or The reason uh, the reason you don't find a good picture for these things is usually it's it's a sensitive information so you are restricted from putting uh, taking pictures and putting it online. In fact, uh, you know don't ever take picture when you're working and more than likely you know you get uh, disciplined or you get in trouble. Especially if you're working for a financial institution, like a bank or something, yeah, don't don't take around pictures. They'll tell you explicitly, don't take pictures and put it online and do all those stuff here because you know what if you end up taking a picture in the uh, you know, end up picking uh, or giving good information to hackers, you know. That, that's what the information they're looking for. Okay, so now that's it. So we are done with the password recovery here. This part is uh, just informational here. You don't need to worry about it too much. Okay, so for password, you have to boot into the recovery mode and then you have to type mount hyphen remount rw so i would recommend practice this like 100 times that's it so that is burnt into your memory and when you're gonna go for take a test you won't forget because for the red hat test you have to go in there and take a test physically but I'm not sure these days, so even these days you have to go in, I think, with the COVID going around. 
so but anyway you don't have to have to have a certification to get a job whatever things I'm showing you is like put you way ahead of the curve and then I should get you a good paying job okay So that's it. So next thing I'm gonna start is the disk management. This is very important. Disk management is very important and um, you have to know really good managing the disk. Disk in the sense I'm talking about the hard, hard disk. Okay, so we're good. So next thing we're gonna start is the disk management. Go ahead and log into your party and then from there we'll start it. Okay, so I'm gonna say Go ahead Hello Hello, okay, okay, I see are we still running the GUI upgrade? With the party on. Is it says active or inactive? Uh, my 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 GUI is uh, is uh, is running, so it's active. When did you start that? Oh, that's the one that we've had since that time. I didn't I didn't log out of it. So it must be done then. What does it say? Is it is it complete? It should say something there. On my GUI, it says uh, root localhost and uh, yeah, exactly. What I mean, what you have without the ZMPT01. Yeah, it's okay. You're good. But then my my party is not. It's sent, it's saying network error. Connection timeout. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was asking you. So yeah, j just close that and start a new party. Okay. But in fact, uh, we're gonna use uh, we're gonna use not the GUI one anymore. Okay, go ahead and shut down the GUI one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I 
Okay, so all of them has the storage okay so I'm gonna go back to the one uh, that says uh, practice here I'm gonna I'm not gonna go through the updated one the kernel or GUI okay let's work on the one that says practice okay go ahead and start that up Okay, all right, good. So now, now that is up here, so I'm gonna go into the one that says practice. I'm back to my old login. Uh-oh, it may not work because I think. fifty-six Oh, it's working. Yeah, mine is not working. It's saying network error as well. Connection timeout. Mm -hmm. Which one are you using? Practice? Yes, sir. I'm using a practice one for the uh, for the practice as well. Let me I guess let me try it again. Let me see. Log in directly and see what the IP address is. Okay. Let me log in on the I logged in on the practice one directly as well out of the party. Let me type so the what IP is the there. IP there? The IP is uh, 192.168.56.255. 255? Uh-huh. I think I mentioned you don't use uh, 255. The number 255 is reserved. Were you able to connect before? Yeah, that's what I've been using all this while. Okay, oh, interesting. So go ahead and try using it again. Type it manually in there. If not, type it twice in the putty. Okay, let me. What I meant by is typing the IP address here and over here typing the IP address also. Okay, let me. Let me bring up party and see. Yeah, it's just it says network error cannot assign requested address. 
do this here. Uh, launch, type in there and type CMD. There's a dark window comes up. Type, okay. type I'm ping I'm and then the IP address. So type what, I'm sorry? Type, type ping. ping. Okay. PING 192.168.56.250 for me. It should come back as a reply of uh, four pings. Okay, let me, let me. Uh... Okay. It's, okay. I request timeout. Okay, so you're not pinging. I have to connect to your system. Give me the number again. It's a four sixty nine two oh nine five three nine. Okay, password. 7D4. 7D4R. 4P. Number 4P as in Papa. Yes, sir. Okay, that is good. Let's see here. Where is 255? I don't see 255 in here. Either use 108 or use 107. Where is 255, buddy? Right here. 192, 168, 56, 255. No, that's a broadcast address. <laughs> okay. Are you in my class? This yes, is the sir. one. The one that says INET is the IP address. That's a broadcast address. We'll talk about that okay. a little later. I, yeah. We'll talk about that in a network class. And uh, so either you could use 108 or 107 or 10.0.2.7. Uh, okay, so bring up Putty. Yeah, load practice. Click on practice and load it. No, no, I said to load it, man, not open it. Close this. Bring up putty again. And click load button there. Okay, now go ahead and change it to 108 or something. Save it and open it. There you go. You're in business now. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. Now I know how to do it now when I have that problem again. Yeah. You just have to figure it out a couple times, then you you would know. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. So let's begin here. This is very, very important. You have to know this really good. You will, you will never get a job if you don't know this disk management, okay? I'm telling you, I'm giving you everything to the teeth. Don't look anything on the internet, just follow this and then you will be successful, okay? Because I want you all to be successful. Okay, so, so in the, Disk means, hard drive means, you, everybody know what the hard drive is, right? Inside the system is a hard drive. Okay, this is the hard drive. 
this is like uh, it kind of opened up here I have one customer um, I'll talk about the later here but this is a hard drive that where every, all the data is okay so for example if you are in trouble trouble with the police or something they come and get your computer and they take out the hard drive they analyze the hard drive okay so this is yeah. where all the data is stored similarly this is where everything the company has the company important data everything is being stored there so let's talk about the hard drives uh, you could hear this interchangeably it's called hard disk usually it's called hard disk uh, but uh, if you know what a hard disk is it's actually a hard drive okay in the old days there used to be a soft drive also it's called floppy disk but it's gone now guys it's been gone for 20 years but now this is there so the hard drive could be many types one is ide okay uh what does ide means okay so ide right and um should i go into ide i'm, I'm not going to define what ide is okay because we're not using that anymore but uh, linux linux will handle these kind of drives kind of devices it will be in linux it will be listed as dev slash hda hda and for scuzzy scsi this is the hard drives we're gonna work with okay uh, linux also will handle this can you go on mute please this kind of devices as dev slash as sda okay look at the difference here sda and sda it's totally different and then the one uh, which is virtual if it's a virtual drive, Linux will handle as SD Dev VDA. Okay, so now we are worried about only SCSI drives, okay? So SCSI, SCSI, SCSI stands for SCSI, okay? All right, so let's see what SCSI is. Okay, I like this. I like this better. So, this is a SCSI drive. Small computer. Uh, interface is set of standard for physically connecting and transferring the data, computers, peripherals, blah, 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 blah. So, don't worry about this uh, for this class uh, this is what it is enough i'm not teaching you the hardware class it's a software class okay so how is the how is it uh, uh, the system is being handling the hard drives i'll show you how
So the very first drive So the the labeling for the very first drive is dash slash SDA Second drive dev slash sd b it goes through the alphabet third drive can somebody tell me what is the third drive would be sdc very good sdc okay so all the way through when it comes to the 26th drive, what will be the 26th drive? It's SDZ. Yeah, very good. SDC. So Linux, Linux could handle unlimited number of hard drives. Like here in your computer, uh, here, we have C, D. I never saw any. I never saw anything more than like four or five hard drives in here, right? But Linux, uh, if you go on to a job, don't be surprised if you have like 26, 27, more than 30 hard drives attached. But here's the thing: how is it going to handle the 28? How it will handle the 27 drive? Can you tell me how does it handle the 27 drive? Can you do like a Z1 or like you start adding other numbers to it instead of the just this, the alphabet by itself? Uh, no, it's an alphabet again. But it'll start on the top. S, D, A. Then it will add another A to it. So it will start here. And then it will add another A. How would be the 28 drive? So it's gonna go down with A is gonna go down all the way to Z again. How would this one be? Is it S D B B? A B. A B, oh okay. <coughs> now A is in charge up until it reaches the 27th, uh, 26th. Then you will start B A and B B all that. It's crazy, it's crazy, but you, you will learn. <clears throat> you will learn all this here, okay? So let's move off from here. So on the, on your party, type L S B L K. It's a new command. L S B L K stands for list block. So very first one is SDA and it has partitions in it, SDA 1 and 2. The second one is SDB and third one is SDC. Okay, I'll tell you what it is. Uh, when you come back here, you see A, B, C, right? Where is this coming from? When you go in there, in the settings, you go into storage, this is A, this is B, this is C. If you add another one in there, fourth one, it will become SD, SDE. Actually, it's become SDD. Okay. Is it clear so far? Okay, good. So, 
here actually, let me see if it's gonna give the option settings storage add. It does not allow you to add here, but don't do it on your machine. I'm just checking. <clears throat> storage add. create a new disk over here it will tell you what kind of disk you want okay we so we we've been using vdi virtual disk image virtual box image and you have vhd uh, which is virtual hard drive a virtual machine disk hdd parallels hard drive so we are not worried about this here the most of the time you will be worried about is vdi and it will work as SCSI. Okay, so let's move forward here. So if you want to list the hard drives, you type LSBLK. So to list the drive, you type lsblk and this is the output that will come. Okay. List the disk. Okay, so this is SDA, SDB, SDC, okay. <clears throat> Now, if you want to, um, if you go in here, so slash dev is what? Slash dev. I'm talking about ls hyphen l dev slash sd. And if I do asterisk, this is where the drives are listed. This is the dev location. This is where the drives are listed. Remember, even the hard drives and all those are handled as a file. A folder is a file. A file is a file. And now a device is also a file. Okay. Okay, good. So let's go ahead and mention that. Okay, so This is a file, a partition inside the, the device is also a file here. All these are files. Can I ask a question? Yeah, whenever? sure. Sure, so when we um, enter the command uh, lsblk and it gave us a list, of uh, S, D, A, B, and C. So on this virtual box, there are like three hard drives? Yeah. Three physical ones. One, two, three. Okay, and the first drive, uh, when we installed the operating system, it used that, and it, uh, it creates two partition, one and two. One is a SDA1 okay. and it's a boot partition. Uh, remember when I was teaching you system initialization? 
all the boot a boot related files are sitting in here okay so is the kernel and then this is the root volume if you go in the root all the file structure is in here and the swap so i haven't talked about the swap but we will when when i get to the swap partition okay so now this is a typical installation this is the c drive consider this as a c drive for windows and you have to have at least one hard drive for the system to work or else it won't work minimum of one hard drive and you're going to show us how to add and remove hard drives oh yeah the, this is what this class is for okay, okay. i'm telling you uh, this is very very important uh, you may not be quizzed about uh, some basic commands but uh, during the interview because it's important right and nobody else have access to it other than root and uh, it has all the users data on it okay so you have to be careful how you are using the commands because it's really important So let's go ahead and how is the disk managed? So the disk is managed uh, other ways. Uh, uh, one is uh, you know what? Okay, yeah. So the three ways to manage it. Three ways to manage the disk three common ways I, I think there are more ways to manage it but this is the three uh, uh, most uh, three common ways to manage the disk okay uh, one is F disk so if you know if you have used F disk on Windows that doesn't mean is a as a Windows product. It's a, actually coming from Unix. Okay, this is fixed disk. Uh, F I X E D. Fixed disk setup uh, program. Okay, the next one is G disk. I have to uh, figure that out here and the third one is LVM LVM YM this one is a logical volume manager this is the one you use all the time LVM is the one you're going to be using it most of the time at GDisk uh, let me find that out what the G-Disk was. Uh, I haven't, honestly, I haven't used it. Uh, most of the time you will never use it, but I'm going to have to show you. F-Disk and G-Disk, you don't use it. LVM is the one you use it all the time here. So, uh, give me one second here. G-Disk is a GPT. And most of the time it's uh, looks and acts similar there's a common common line uh,
Okay, so that was uh, April 19th. Right? Okay, so you know what? I actually just hold on here. Uh, let me get the definition of what G disk is. And we'll, what is G disk in? Okay, so the G disk is specific to uh, Linux only. So, <clears throat> but what is G disk of the? What is the? G disk is. Uh, okay, it's so the same as F disk. Okay, but GPT same as f disk but uses gpt okay i'll come to this here what it means here okay but anyway so for today we're going to concentrate on uh, f disk and i will move forward from there for uh, g disk uh, i may have to do some research for next week and then i'll be ready for next week but let's work on f disk Uh, D I S K So this is a uh, uh, F disk uh, This is fixed disk Setup program okay so le let's go ahead and start working on it okay so clear your screen and go ahead and issue the command f disk then uh, we're gonna work on uh, the b drive so you have to tell which disk is it dev slash sdb okay we are working on this disk sdb So if you're working on this disk, you give the command like that, okay? If it was C drive, what would you do? You would give C. So I'm gonna hit enter. And what happened here is the utility starts. I think the F disk is going back way back since the Unix is. Okay. Now what happens here is uh, you have to give M for menu. Okay. Okay. Uh, so if you type M for menu, what you get is you get a list here. 
So the one I'm looking for is add a new partition. So the disk is, I have a disk here, it's a blank disk. I have a blank disk here, right? So the, this disk is um, slash dev slash sdb and uh, what is the size for this uh, uh, is what is the size for this disk okay so let me queue to quit it I'm going to clear this lsblk and it tells you sdb is 16 gb right here if you look at this line it says sdb is 16 gb okay so let's go ahead and go in there f this slash dev slash sdb So now this is a blank disk. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a partition. So I'm gonna do M. To create a partition, you have to push letter N. N as in Nancy, okay? So you push M for menu, and then you push N as in Nancy, and hit enter. And then you get an option here, which disk you want to uh, create. P is, P disk is already selected, so it's P for primary disk. If you just hit enter, it will automatically select P. And hit enter. And what is the partition number? This one has a number here. Why does it have as a number? Over here, when it make a partition, it got like one, two, three. You, you could have four primary partitions and as many as extended partitions here. Okay, so we'll worry about that later. So, so this is like a blank room. Now we are creating a blank space. I'm sorry, it's like a blank space. Now I'm creating rooms inside that blank space, okay? <clears throat> so I'm gonna say one and hit enter. I'm telling you don't give up on this, this is very important. And then the sectors. is telling you which sectors you want to use from. From which sector, it's starting Right in here in the middle, you could have sectors in here, but uh, I haven't seen anybody is using it. So you're starting from the left side all the way going to the right, okay? So default is uh, 2048. So here just hit enter. So it took the default, it took the default value, the default starting value. Okay, now the third one is showing here is, uh, so last sector here. So what, where, how, what is the size you want to give? Okay, over here I want to give 8 GB. You could give the information in kilobyte, megabytes or gigabytes, okay? So you have to type the plus and then the sign and then GB. So I'm gonna type plus, Okay, and then how much you want? I want eight, and what do you want? G, that means I want eight gigabytes. Okay, so the partition is created now. So the partition is created for eight gigabytes.
so now our hard drive 16 GB is split into two now so this is 8 GB and uh, what is the name of our hard drive now dev slash sd b take a guess sdb over here it says the default partition partition number what would be the number here one yeah one exactly so it became first partition here and now if you push p the partition is created sdb1 and it gives you uh, this is uh, inode information here actually and it's telling you that this is the boot device uh, th this is the device information <coughs> the starting block is 2048 ending block is this much here so if you divide uh, this number with 2048 you should get 16 GB here so where is the calculator bring the calculator out okay so 16 million divided by 2048 so it says 1192 megabytes uh, I'm sorry 8192 megabytes which will make it 8 gigabytes okay I got a question so uh, when we hit enter uh, when we hit number one enter mm-hmm I followed you up to there, but after that, how did you get everything else? Um, yeah, so um, where, like where first are, vector. Okay, there you type plus eight GB. Plus and GB. Oh, plus, plus GB. number eight and uh, uppercase G. Make sure it's uppercase G. And then hit enter. Okay, now I got two sector. You want me to connect or you got it? Now I, now I get to the last sector, plot sector or size. It says and partition then... one type Linux size 8 GB set. Right, right. Okay. Now push. Oh, no, no, no. No, it doesn't say that. No. Just, just the line above it. That's where I am right now. Where it says uh, last sector plus sectors or, or plus size. Mm -hmm. So type yeah. there plus 8G. Plus 8G. Uppercase G. And hit enter. It says, it says well, you are a French. Huh? <laughs> yeah, it says, well, you out of French. Mm -hmm. uh, look at this one here, the one I, the way I highlighted. Type exactly the way it is. Okay, let me try one more time. Plus. Eight G. Enter. Yeah, it still says uh, value out of range, and then it's mm -hmm. back to where it says last sector, plus sector or plus size. Okay, so let me connect. Which one are you? One eight eight. Uh, it's eight eight. Uh, the last are one eight eight. And let me give you a password one moment.
Uh, is Q as in Queen, 87. Mm -hmm. I, H, 3. I as in India, H as in Hydrogen, 3. Okay. No, over here you shouldn't have typed that there, 8 plus G. So do control C there. Okay, now let's do F disk again. Bring the line back up. Just roll up. There you go. Enter. And push uh, One. push M M here, push M. Because what you see here is a, a menu here. From this menu, we selected new partition. But before that, since you were then there already, so just push P and hit enter. So you said there is no partition see there, okay? So okay. now what you got to do is. And as in Nancy, and hit enter new partition. And then we need a primary partition. You could push P and hit enter. And then which partition number you want? You have option one to four, so we want one and hit enter. Now here's Press this, one and hit enter. In the, over here, don't type anything. Simply hit enter. Now type 8 plus GB, 1G, I mean 8 uppercase G plus 8 uppercase G. Yeah, there you go. It took it now. Now push okay. P and hit enter. So there you go. You have the partition is created but it's not saved yet okay so to save the partition follow me so here okay. we are good here so the partition is created if you want to save it push w as in woman and hit enter that means you're writing it writing it to it you're you're writing the partition to the uh, to the hard drive and exiting so you got the partition table has been altered. Calling, I don't know what that means, to re read partition table, syncing disk. Okay. So what happened? We are success we successfully did this. So uh, let me just highlight the ones uh, Okay, now do LSBLK, LSBLK. Now you should see SDB1. So SDB is the total disk drive size. Out of that, SDB1 is a partition and it's 8 gigabytes. I have a question for you, sir. How do you get away from the command line back to the uh, the the one that says command that we're using to get all the uh, the menu back to the uh, where you are right now? I think is it, I, I was trying to escape. Yeah, don't use escape. Uh, you have to do. Uh, <laughs> Let me finish this. Okay, sir. Okay, so this is a newly created partition. Okay, yeah. 
All right, so I have to connect your system to see what is going on. What's your team team viewer ID? Let me pull it up right quick, sir. Uh, team it's a four six nine two zero nine five three nine. Okay. <clears throat> and the password is uh <clears throat> E H two V three nine. Okay. All right, let me see a party. Okay, uh, push M and hit enter. Push what, I'm sorry, M? Mm -hmm. Okay, then push P and hit enter. Okay. Okay. okay, yeah, the, your partition is created. Now, what you need to do is if you look up in the menu, the second last it says right to the right table to the desk and exit. So you have to type okay. W and hit enter. Here you go. Okay, that's okay. Good now do LSBLK. Now look under SDB, you have SDB1. And the size of the hard drive. Yes, sir. Eight gig. Yep. You're good. So, could you explain um, what the first sector twenty forty eight is? Yeah, didn't I explain that already? Two zero four eight yep. is a, a basic. Uh, sector basic building block so if we go up here Uh, okay. So give me one second here. Um, 2048 is 4096. Okay. Input output block. Okay, remember when when I was talking about stack, right? We have this information here, four zero nine six. Okay. So I explained here where is four zero nine six is coming from. Okay, so four zero nine six is uh, uh, 4096 is one kilobyte okay and then the building block of one kilobyte is half uh, uh, for two kilobyte is for two zero four eight so the file system the least thing the file system is gonna use is four kilobyte why we are using this four kilobyte because we are using the file system which is called ext4 ext4 file system the minimum is going to use is four kilobyte so i explained to you if the size of the file is going to be if the size of a file is going to be a zero 
still is gonna use four kilobytes up until it hits four kilobytes. If it's more than four kilobytes, then it's jump to eight. Okay, so this is the building block. Half of that 4096 is 2048. So the F disk is using 2048 is the least starting block. Okay. For in this scenario, this one is the least starting block is this one here. So if it's a different file system, it will use this as a 2048 as a least starting uh, block to save the data here. But the, but the operating system, the file system, which is, which is using to write, it needs minimum of double as much. The single block in the ext4 file system is 4096. It's possible that any other other file systems which we're going to discuss uh, in great length that how the file system is managed okay so 40 so you have a big a blank room and uh, consider this as a tiles okay so 2kb is one tile so i i really hate this why they show this in kilobytes you know what i mean at least they should say 2k or 4k but it's showing you all the 1248 bytes actually uh, i should go up there again Okay, here. If you look at the picture here, uh, so on the granular level, everything is written in zeros as one, right? So the smallest, smallest, uh, smallest item you have you could write is one bit but it doesn't come it doesn't come single uh, on its own it has to be a it has to be paired with eight bits so if you pair one eight one bit is bit and if you pair eight bits together it becomes one byte okay one bit is one bit eight bit becomes one byte eight bit is byte means one byte eight bit is actually one byte here i, I put down wrong one byte b y t e this is bit Okay, and one kilobyte is one KB kilobyte. Okay, so 1024. Okay, so this is a multiples of eight here. So let's do some math. Mm. So 1024 divided by 8 is 128, right? So this is a 2 to the power of 7. So, so the so the way this is it's written is 0, 01001 0, 1, 0, 1, or 00, 0 or 111. Okay, so it's binary. 
there is, when uh, when the computer system is writing to the hard drive, it's writing in binary, okay? Okay, you've seen this like matrix thing going on. So I don't care what the, what you write on the system here. The system will write into zeros and one. I'll explain this to you when we're doing the IP address. The system will write on the disk zeros or ones, nothing else. Okay. What is this matrix? Now don't look at this here. So every every alphabet, every characters have a binary code, okay? So binary code to text here, okay? So let's see what happens. So if I type here Zafar, and if I say translate, mm, not this one here, text to binary code. So if I type, uh, oh God. if I type Zafar here, the this is how the computer is gonna keep my name as Zafar. So if you say A, this is the binary code. When you when you when you type A in the Word document and save it, this is how it's gonna save it. Zero zero zero. It will be in the pair of eight. Okay, I I will tell you. Uh, we'll explain you a little later here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, this part is. So this part is. Uh, if you do two. Times. Zero. Uh, no, actually what, uh, two times one is two, okay, three, uh, okay, hold on. Two to the power of Two to the power of zero is two, okay? How do I show this here? Two to the power of, is there a scientific here? Okay, good. Two to the, if two is raised, is this, I, I don't even know how to use this. Let me expand this a little bit here. If two is raised, uh, no, it's doing square here, okay? So I have to write it down here. Okay, let's go two to the power of two. Two times two is Four times two is eight mm. times sixteen thirty two sixty four one twenty eight. So if you count how many times we have used here, I mean using one, 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 two. I have to start all over and say, let me clear the history. How do you okay? Two to the power of one, I'm not able to do it. Let's do it two to the power of two. It's gonna be four. Uh, five. No. Uh, this is eight is two to the power of three, okay? Two times two times two. Three, four, 
फाइव सिक्स सेवन ओके सो एक्चुअली वी आर स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम जीरो एंड आर स्टॉपिंग एट सेवन विच इज एट डिजिट्स ओके सो दिस इज वन ट्वेंटी एट so the binary for this is going to come up to 128 and if you do the math here later on 1 kilobyte is going to come out to 1024 okay so how is that going to be 1024 is uh, 128 times uh, now now this is the base 8 right 8 times 2 again 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 It starts from 0 actually so now this is multiplying here times 8 time to the power of 2 goes 1024 okay 1024 is kilobyte so 4 kilobyte is uh 1024 times 4096 is 4 kilobytes here i think we are done for the day here i'll explain you tomorrow what is this all about okay because it's really important you know what no it's not it's not that important here but it's important to understand how all these things is working and how the computer system is dependent on math okay so you probably heard uh, about math will come back and haunt you this is where it is if you were good in math you would get what i'm talking about because all everything in the world electronic is nothing but a math okay so i'm going to stop here we'll continue uh, from here tomorrow and then we'll go from there okay any questions put it in a chat you, and then uh, hopefully you will get the, all this concept and everything all right i'm going to stop now and i'll catch up uh, next week i mean sorry tomorrow